Hey everybody, welcome to the show that doesn't have a proper name yet, but I'm working on it. In this episode, I'm exploring generative fill in Adobe Photoshop. So get ready to bend reality, create unseen landscapes, add rivers, add mountains, volcanoes, expand our visual horizons, possibly grow some hair without going to Turkey, and generate some humans. All of that with incredible speed that will save you hours of your precious time. That sounds like an intense episode when I say it out loud. Let's go. So today, our journey begins up in the Polish mountains. This is a real estate photograph of a cabin taken during blue hour with a drone. But I would like to transform it into a thumbnail for this video. So I'm going to expand the image and also change its proportions with a crop tool. Now I'm going to select the empty areas with a marquee tool, slightly overlapping with the content of the image. Once you have an active selection, a text entry prompt box appears in this contextual taskbar. This is where you describe an object or a scene that you would like to generate with Photoshop, but you can also leave it empty. And when you do so, Photoshop will fill in the selection based on the surroundings, which is exactly what I'm going to do in this case, because I'm just expanding the image so it will know very well what to do. Just click generate and this is uploading to the cloud and in return, we will get three different variations. This is number one. I'm going to just zoom in slightly. This is number two and number three. They are all pretty similar. I'd like to create maybe more of an intimate mood in this photograph. So let's get rid of the neighbor's house and this one as well. There are actually three structures here. So I'm just going to make a loose selection and this time I'm going to type in forest so it covers this white hole with a forest, hopefully. An excellent job. Again, every variation looks nice. I've mentioned this photograph was taken up in the mountains, but I don't see any mountains in here. So let's fix that. Uh, I think I'm going to create some kind of a valley shape here. And again, I'm slightly overlapping with the content of an image. And this time I'm going to type in mountains. All right, this is incredible. Wow. Every single variation is really nice. So to finish up this image, I'm just going to replace the sky. And for that, I am using one of the skies from my own collection of 360 skies, uh, photographed with medium for my camera, created specifically for real estate and architecture. You can use it with everything else. You can find the link in the description. And now I'm just going to lower this sky because I'm looking to get that nice moon. And it's a little too dark, so I'm just going to adjust the brightness. And this is fantastic. Okay, so let's move on from Poland to Iceland. This is one of my very first images I took on my first trip to Iceland. Let's just grab a marquee tool and select the empty areas. Again, slightly overlapping the content of an image. And we're going to leave this box empty and just click generate. Number one and two and three, they are all very nice. Let's just add a river down here at this portion of an image. I'm going to type in river. Okay, this is really amazing. The thing with variations is that if you don't like the initial three, you can always regenerate again and you can use the contextual taskbar or you can use properties tab in this panel on the side. So I'm just going to regenerate it and I'm going to get three additional variations. Now keep in mind that every single generated layer, that's non-destructive editing because this layer is on top of your original image. Let's go with this one, but now I'm not trying to regenerate a new layer. I'm just trying to remove the uh, reflections on the water and maybe the stone. Let's see if Photoshop can figure it out without any instructions. Okay, let's go with number two. And since this is in Iceland, I think we are missing a volcano. Wow, 
This is really nice. Oh yes. This one as well. So to finish up with this image, let's just remove a bunch of these horses and just leave this one guy. So I'm just making a very loose selection and slightly overlapping the white horse. And again, no instructions, just the selection and click generate. This is our before and this is after. We can leave Iceland and move to Norway. And in this case, let's do it in reverse order because everything is already generated. As you can see, sometimes Photoshop goes nuts. So this cat, this is like an illustration of, uh, from, from a horror uh, cartoon maybe. But let me just turn this cat off. And there's a nice little puppy. Photoshop is not very good with generating humans, at least at the moment, but it's very good at generating humans in motion, which is exactly what I did in this case. So if you look at this layer, uh, the prompt I used was add person with motion blur, and every single one is really, really good. I actually liked this one the most. And look at the blender, the juicer. You can just Pick whatever you like. Maybe we can say add blue juicer. Yeah, that's that's just insane. In this case, I've actually asked for a person walking up the stairs with motion blur, but uh, Photoshop didn't pay much attention to me. Uh, and I've only liked the first one. The other two were only like, really bad. And there's this weird artifact in here when you look at this example it's worth uh, mentioning that when photoshop creates layers for example this person this is not something that you can move around because it generates with a background baked in so whenever you make a selection and you want to generate something in here like let's say this puppy it will generate a puppy and also the background that's behind it. So, of course, you can work around it. So let's say you like this puppy quite a lot and you want to move it over here, then you will just have to go and edit the mask. Just mask away the, uh, the background. But it's not always possible. It might create other additional difficulties with shadows and reflections and things like that. But nonetheless, it will speed up your workflow dramatically. Okay, so next stop is a bus stop in Toronto. And let's just start with removing this black box without any text. We're just trying to remove it quick and easy. Wasn't that quick and wasn't that easy in the past. This is just amazing. Absolutely incredible. Let's go with number one. Now, let's remove this car. Okay, let's remove a bunch of these cars. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay, so maybe um, let's stick with number one and let's try to expand this image quite a bit. That's good enough for start. And I'm just going to select it with Marquee Tool not going all the way to the edges. Reverse my selection and generate the background. Okay. Oh, wow. This is nice. And that's even better. I love this one. Oh, let's keep going. Let's see what happens when we expand it even more. Again, just a marquee tool, make a selection of the image, reverse the selection, and generate. Okay. One more time. <laughs> wow. Let's go with this one and 
How about we just add another yellow bus? No, that's actually really bad. Yeah, this is this is terrible. It's like an illustration here. I was hoping for super impressive result, but uh, can't always get what you want. How about we just maybe try to go to the other side? Oh, okay. Let's see what happens here. Okay. What? Yeah. Let's move on. Let's take a road trip. This one, I, I think that's not a photo. That's probably an illustration. This is from Adobe Stock. And that's just select with a lasso tool. The road. And now extract from the selection this car and I'm just going around the car very loosely okay and let's type in road see what happens well since this was an illustration I think we can just go with with number one and Let's see if we can put some light in here. Uh, headlights on. Yo, oh, that's nice. No, oh, okay, so this is before and after. A couple of seconds. This is an example that shows how Photoshop is taking the lighting into account and it's doing an amazing job. Not to mention that hair was always something that was very difficult to render, especially like in animation. Uh -huh. And this is just incredible. I mean, maybe that's slightly over the top. No, thank you. You can remove objects and you can remove people. Sometimes weird things happen, but uh, when I removed this person on the left, uh, you can see that it did an amazing job of recreating the background and taking the depth of field into the account. But when I tried to remove the other person from the image, then now uh, something <laughs> weird happened. Like, uh, yeah, it's really spooky sometimes what it does to hands and, um, and humans in general. Yeah, this is something weird about uh, our hands. Okay, so this next image is a wedding style photo shoot and I tried to work on it a couple times and I was getting very mixed results. Some of them were really nice and some of them not so much. So um, let's see what we can get in here. I'm just going to reverse the selection and generate the background. Okay, now Groom wearing suit. Let's remove chairs. And let's maybe change the haircut. This is absolutely incredible. Look at that. Uh, just show you my previous results, which I was very happy with. And I've also applied some uh, depth blur with neural filters. And that was the result I liked the most. And you can actually see a different type of hair in this one. This is absolutely amazing. Look at that. And this is before and after. Okay, so for this final image, let's see if we can remove some of the distractions in this architectural shot from Stavanger. So I'm just making a loose selection around those people. I like to have people in my architectural shots, but I prefer to have a little more control over them. So it was very difficult to remove it with 
content aware fill or a clone stamp tool or whatever combination of techniques because of the spotlights and the texture on the floor. Yeah, but this one does an excellent job. Look at that. That's fantastic how it recreated all the stuff on the floor. This is slightly different, but I'm not an architect. I'd like that. I don't care about this small detail. This is an excellent job. It would take me a lot of time to do it manually. Now, let's see if maybe we can add a person in this spot. Okay. This guy looks a bit like a zombie. <laughs> let's try one more batch. But look at the shadows, he's like, he's in the spotlight. So that's pretty amazing. All right, chilling at the opera. Okay, I think we can uh, leave it like that. And let's just see if we can expand interior a little bit that is pretty nice something to work with okay so that's it for today do not generate and drive and uh, I'll see you in the next video